Hello, I'm Pastor Price. This is my wife, First Lady Pamela Price. We'd like to thank you for joining us here in the Living Epistle Facebook Live for our Bible study on this evening. We're going to pick up where we left off last week in dealing with 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. But before we get into the word on tonight, we're going to open up with a word of prayer. So if you will, wherever you are, if you would just bow your heads with us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time and this opportunity to get into your word. I ask that you would open up our hearts, open up our minds, God, and help us be able to comprehend and understand what you're sharing with us through your word on tonight. And Father, I give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. The Holy Word of God. The Holy Word of God. It is my food. It is my food. Water. Water. Light. Light. Strength. Strength. And final authority. And final authority. Through it. Through it. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. And reconciled unto God. And reconciled unto God. Now, now as I hear the Word of God. As I hear the Word of faith God. Faith will come. Faith will come. Through faith. Through faith. Salvation, salvation is mine. Salvation is Through mine. faith. Through faith. Healing is mine. Healing is mine. Through faith. Through faith. Deliverance is mine. Deliverance is mine. Through faith. Through faith. Prosperity is mine. Prosperity. All, of God's blessings, all of God's blessings. 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 They are mine. Are mine. All right then. We have been doing a study uh, most recently in First Peter, and we are made our way down to the fourth chapter. So we're going to pick up here at the twelfth verse, where Peter begins to talk about the true attitude of the Christian, the believer, when they are facing times of affliction. Now, there are some words that I want to mention to you. Those words are persecution, affliction, trials, and tests. Now, we use those interchangeably, meaning that, you know, we, we use one or the other. And it just, you know, these words can describe or depict a, a, a bad situation that we're in. And, uh, and, and we're going to see on tonight through the word that Peter is using some of these words that I just mentioned. But here he talks about the attitude of the believer. Believe it or not, it is your attitude that will determine how you go through a test, a trial, a tribulation, or persecution time, and, and, and how you deal with it. Your attitude will uh, uh, will determine how you deal with it. Amen? Count me go. Amen. Your attitude. So let's begin and look at some things here. He says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. It seems to me by using that term, fiery trial, meaning this thing is going to be hot, it's going to be uncomfortable, it's going to be one that garners or gets your attention. He says, the fiery trial, which is to try or to test you as though some strange thing happened to you. We need to get it into our minds that this is a part of this way of living, that we are going to deal with persecution, we're going to deal with afflictions, we're going to deal with tests, and we're going to deal with the trials. Get it into our minds and get it to our hearts. And I'm going to share with you uh, so later on some scriptures that were going to help you uh, where Jesus and the other apostles talk about it. But let's go on a little bit more here. He says, as though some strange thing happened to you. He says, but rejoice. What? He wants us to rejoice. Let's go on a little bit more. In so much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Exceeding joy. Before we go on, let's look at some scriptures. So let's go to Matthew 13, 21. Matthew 13. You know, while you're going there, I was thinking uh, with that scripture, how, you know, we are in a battle. Yes, we are. And when we exit the kingdom of darkness and from being up under Satan's rulership, he's not going to just let you go easy. There's going to be a fight. He is not going to let you go easy. And the great thing about it, that last scripture saying, when is it revealed? Meaning the glory, because meaning that once uh, the problem is solved, and uh -huh. once the glory have come on your situation, we're going to come out with exceedingly joy. With exceeding, I mean, above and beyond that which is, some would say, even normal. Mm -hmm. But let's look at something here in Matthew, the 13th chapter. We start at the 18th verse where Jesus begins talking about the parable and the sower. 
He talks about 18 verses. He says, hear ye therefore the parable of the sword. He says, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away or taketh away that which was sown in his heart. That, uh, that this is he which, uh, which revealed, excuse me, received seed by the wayside. He says, but he that received the seed in stony, into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word and anon, uh, from that point on, with joy receive it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth or endureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word by and by, he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that hears the word. He says, and the care of this world, which could be, you know, sometimes a trial, test, tribulation, and the deceitful, uh, nuss, deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. The point I want you, or the verse I want you to really focus on, it says, when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. When the word, when persecution comes because of you living the life for Jesus Christ, an individual can get offended. He can get afraid. He can get offended and all like that. Let's go on a little bit more. Let's, let's, look, let's go to John 16, 33. When you say uh, an individual, you're talking about that person. Oh, so, so is it that person, like when they're going through persecution? Mm -hmm. And, you know, because sometimes when people are going through persecution or tribulation, they begin to blame God. They begin to get offended. Yes. And when, and when I say this, it just kind of set the stage a little bit more. You know, when you're at your job or when you're with your peers or your classmates or, you know, people like that, you know, sometimes that all of them are not Christians or all of them are not believers. And from time to time, they will want to do what they do, which sometimes probably smoke, sometimes drink, sometimes go out to party and all this other stuff like that. And they can make little cracks or they can say things. Well, you know, we, we got the Jesus boy over here, so we know we can't do this. Or, you know, we we, we may have to wait until he goes back uh, or, you know, go somewhere else and he's not around and all like that. And the point is, when they do say things like that, mm -hmm. you cannot get offended because you are a believer mm -hmm. and just fall out of and say, I just give up. Mm -hmm. You can't let that affect you, so to say. But let's look at John 16, 33. John 16 and 33. I get there myself. 16 and 33. John 16 and 33. He says, uh, I tell you what, let's start at the 29th verse. It flows a little bit better. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly and speakest no proverb. So this was a place and point where they fully didn't understand Jesus the way he was speaking. And he was speaking in a parable. And she talked about it this past Sunday in reference to the reason why he used parables. And uh, he was trying to articulate a spiritual or a heavenly thought or uh, type of thinking to them by using something that was natural that they can identify with, such as sheep or animals or plants or whatever it is, but they, they didn't understand. So now the disciples, they got him alone and they asked him to speak plainly. He says, now, are we sure that thou knowest all things and needest not that any man should ask thee? He says, by this, we believe that thou camest forth from God. Jesus answered them, do you or do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone, and yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. He says, in the world ye shall have tribulation. He tells his disciples, his followers, he lets them know, in the world, while you're living here, while you are operating and participating in their system to a degree. He says here, it comes, the territory includes tribulation. 
That's like if you get into water, you're going to get wet. There's no option about it. It comes with the territory. He says, but be of good cheer. Do not be totally uh, uh, offended. Don't be totally uh, uh, flabbergasted or whatever, so to say. He says, he says, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Meaning that Jesus has been able to overcome the world at his particular time and everything that he's gone through. So he's telling his disciples that be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. And therefore, when all of this is over with, as far as what I have to do for mankind, you will have the wherewithal that you can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. That you <laughs> can overcome tribulation. Mm -hmm. Still, let's go and look at Acts 14 and 19. Acts 14 and 19. I mean, that's powerful for him to say he's overcome yes. the world. And we have to get to that place where we learn to overcome the world. To, to overcome the world. And when we get back to 1 Peter, we're going to see that Peter is trying to set up our attitude as to how we can deal with it. But let's get it. Uh, Acts, what did I say? 14, 19. It says, And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, threw him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. This is one of the things that Paul experienced and go through. Talk about persecution. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we hear, I would say, we hear in America, we don't know this persecution or at this particular level. But let's go a little bit more. He said, 20th verse, how be it, as, this, as the disciples uh, stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystria and to Iconium and Antioch, the same place where they just stoned him. Mm -hmm. They're going back again. <laughs> As if to get some more. Yeah, like they didn't get enough. <laughs> 22 says, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. Again, what this here is pointing out, he had, Paul had been stoned. He get up from being stoned mm -hmm. and he goes somewhere else. Then he goes back to the place where they stoned him because he was so committed to sharing this gospel, this good news, and he had so much concern about the believers who were learning, growing, and maturing through him that he was saying, I'm ready to go back again. If I got to be stoned, I'm willing to do it. Mm -hmm. he, says, he says, exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through how much? Much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Going back a little bit, what you said, not only does the enemy of our faith wants to stop an individual from crossing that threshold, leaving his kingdom into getting into God, but he stands in opposition in any way possible to hinder us from, 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 from advancing even more into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Getting that knowledge. Getting the understanding of the kingdom, because you think about it, he's the prince of darkness. Yes. And Jesus is light. Amen. And he's come to <laughs> cause light to shine on us. So his whole thing is to keep us in darkness. Yes, that's if, what the if, enemy wants to do. Yeah. Keep if us he in could dark. just prevent us from reading the word, if we could just shout all day, that'd be good. <laughs> oh, yes. That, that'd be great. Anything to keep you from getting the understanding of how the kingdom of God works. Because you think about it, he didn't mind getting stoned again because he was, he thought about it. God was well able, well able to raise me up again. If he did it once, he'll do, do it, it again. again. <laughs> and, you know, you, you made a point there in reference to talking about shouting, which is something that we usually do, especially in Pentecostal circle, circles and also other churches. Don't get me wrong. But the thing is, if the enemy can keep you doing that versus hearing the word, understanding the word, that's all right with him because that doesn't scare him. Yeah. <laughs> A shout no. does not scare him. It has no effect on him whatsoever. What makes him tremble and what rebukes him is when a person 
can speak the word from their heart based upon knowledge and stand flat footed and speak the word. Mm -hmm. And that comes from knowledge, yeah. from knowing it. And trust me, we love the shout. We love it. Because you think about it, when you get excited, you want to shout. You want but then to. there's count, it come a time when you got to <laughs> sit down and hear. And it has its place. It has its place. It has its place. Let's go on a little bit more here. Uh, we looked at that uh, to 22. Uh, tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Let's go to 2 Timothy 3 and 12. 2 Timothy 3 and 12 talks about it as well. Let's go there. 2 Timothy. All right. 2 Timothy 3 and 12. 2 Timothy 3. He says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. There's no way around it. There's, <laughs> there's no way around it. So you just got through reading about the sower souls the word and how the enemy is coming mm -hmm. for the word. And so coming for the word. Word and person. I mean, when the enemy is coming for you, that's is that considered persecution? Then? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And he uses other people to come at you as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, he he's behind it all. Oh yeah, he's he's behind it all. So again, we we once we have this settled in our hearts and we have it settled in our mind that we are going to suffer, have to deal with persecution. Now we can develop the attitude that we need. So going back to First Peter four and twelve, it says, "Beloved," talking about those who have committed our lives to Jesus Christ. Excuse me. He says, "Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you." as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, when his power shall be revealed, or it has been displayed for you to see in everyone else. And just imagine mm -hmm. being in a situation that can't nobody get you out but God. God. And when it has been revealed. When it's shown to everybody. Yeah. And they people will know, you didn't do this yourself. Yeah. You wasn't, you wasn't this good. <laughs> and I used to think this was just, uh, this was speaking of heaven. Mm -hmm. But this is about your situation. Because when the situation. glory okay. has been revealed on your situation. On your situation. Yes, Lord. He says here, when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. He says, if ye be reproached, for the name of Christ, happy are ye. If someone wants to dislike you or say bad things about you just because you are a believer in Jesus Christ, he says, happy are ye. Mm -hmm. Be happy about it. You know, they use that word uh, reproach uh, usually in the East because, you know, when a woman uh, was not able to have a baby, uh -huh. uh, she had a reproach on her name, a disapproval in the community. Disapproval. Disapproval. In the community. Yes. And so this can happen when you're in Christ for the name of Christ. You can have a disapproval yeah. upon you by someone else. All right, let's go on here. He says, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. He says, on their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. On their part, he is evil spoken of. And they're doing it out of ignorance and not knowing, not understanding. And again, one of the tricks of the enemy is to make people believe that God, Jesus, and everything this word stands for is their problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it, you know, sometimes you just think that, you know, sometimes uh, believers, when they haven't really got a hold of the word, mm -hmm. they just think like they got to really go through until they get to heaven. <laughs> Again, we suffer. This is a suffering trick of the enemy. But let's go on. There. He says here, fifteen verse. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. That's a different type of suffering that a murderer has to suffer or put up with. But let's go. He says, or as a thief. Yeah, different thing. He says, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Mm. He says, yet if any man suffer or put up with some things as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. If you are putting up with some things where you're being, for lack of a better term, ostracized, picked 
on, singled out, all of these things, all because you are in Jesus. He says here, let him glorify God on this behalf because they are recognizing something with you. Mm -hmm. They're able to see something different all about you. He says here, glorify God. God, I thank you. Let's go on here. He says, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Now, I've kind of talked about this and preached about this before, but now is the time where the true believers must be revealed. And that revealing comes through the attitude we have as we deal with the suffering or the persecution that we may go through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and right now in America, this great country of ours, when we look at what other believers are dealing with in China and North Korea, uh, Cuba, or places where the gospel of Jesus Christ is repressed, some of them are paying the price with their very lives. It has not gotten to that place and point here, but nevertheless, still there is a level of persecution. It was all in the news about a man who, he was a baker, he owned a cake shop. And because there was a group who wanted him to make a cake a certain way, and it was going against his convictions, and he did not want to do it, so they launched a campaign to go against him and to get him out of business. That was a form of persecution and all like that. We may have to deal with some things like that mm -hmm. just because we're making the stand that this is my convictions and this is where I, I am and I'm not going to move. We may have to deal with that one day. I think it's going to get to that point. Oh, yeah. Because you, you think about it, we're told, the believers are told not to take the mark of the beast. So that means you will have to resist mm -hmm. something that's going on in, in the world. <laughs> yes. But the thing is, we cannot fear it. No. We cannot be, 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 be fearful and cowering and hiding and all of this other stuff like that. But we have to know and understand the word is already spoken about these things. And we just have to, the best we can do. Prepare. Mm -hmm. Prepare. Prepare. Preparation starts with getting our attitude adjusted to the word. Yeah. And that's yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. Helping get attitudes adjusted to the word. So he says, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. It has to begin with us. Those of us that are in the house of God. Because people on the outside, or they must see the true light of Christ, not that dimmed down stuff, not that stuff that, uh, you know, like uh, Brother Kevin was over here, our uh, electrician at the church, you know, he, he was talking about, we need the, 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 the white light, the great light, you know, <laughs> the, the thing that is very close to natural light. That's what we really need. And this is what believers need to show, not that dim stuff. He said, but he says, and if it first begin at us, if God chooses, and he has chosen, that it must begin at us, with us. What shall the end be of them that obey not mm -hmm. the gospel of God? Wow. What recourse do they have? Mm -hmm. He says, and if the righteous, those who have right standing with God, they scarcely are just, you know, for lack of a better term, just, just make it in. Mm -hmm. be scare, scarcely be saved. Where shall the ungodly, those who are not even thinking about God don't want anything to do with God. And then what about the ones who have a knowledge of God to a degree, but yet and still make the choice to indulge in a life of constantly missing the mark or missing the standard mm -hmm. that God, he says, and the sinner appear, where are they going to appear? Mm -hmm. You're not going to, there's, there's no place, but let's go on here. He says, wherefore let them that suffer, Put up with things according to the will of God. Commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Mm -hmm. And going back to what I read earlier, and in, 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 I think it was uh, in John where Jesus said, you know, I've overcome the world. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to do the same thing. After he did what he did, showed his passion, able to overcome the world. And it's like you have to make up your mind uh, it's going to come a day where you have to make up your mind who you're going to serve. Do you really want to be a, a, a part of the kingdom of God? 
then you got to commit to that. Mm -hmm. We're in that day. And woke to somebody, you know, they get the virus or whatever, and they know about the Lord, and it's like they think they're coming out of it and didn't, wouldn't pick a side. <laughs> you have to be committed in this. In this day and in this time. Yeah. Sides should have already been chosen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we, we, we are not, how should I say, alone. If we look back at ancient Israel, there, the true believers back then, that remnant that the Bible talks about, they had to make the same type of uh, choice. Mm -hmm. They had to make the same type of commitment. We often talk about the three Hebrew boys. We also, you know, often talk about Daniel. We also talk about Job and, you know, and, and, and the prophets, e Elijah and Elisha and, and all of these guys that were sold out to God, that were willing to go to the degree, even Moses. I mean, he had to make a choice. The Bible even talked about how he chose to suffer or deal with, you know, the things as the, the, as the Israelites did, rather than go back to his adoptive home of being in Pharaoh's court. You know, he, he, he chose to suffer and it paid out for him. Yeah. Same thing for us. It we will pay off. Mm -hmm. All right. Any more? No. We're getting ready to move on to the fifth chapter in that same book. So it begins here. He says, though the elders, which are among you, I exhort, whom am also an elder. He says, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ. Now, Peter here, he is talking of things that he saw with his own two eyes. Mm -hmm. He saw Jesus suffer. He saw this. He saw what he went through. He, I mean, I, I was thinking about this as I was studying, preparing it, and, and even now. Je I mean, Peter, you know, when uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, he was called when he was out there fishing. Mm -hmm. So he gets to know Jesus in a fishing situation, mm -hmm. and he goes all the way through. And remember how he denied Jesus? Jesus told me he was going to do that. Remember how he cussed at the um, at the warming barrel and everything when he was an ass and everything? And then he was there uh, when he was crucified. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, he was a part of the group mm -hmm. when he came back yeah. out, of the, out of the grave and everything. And then he was there when Jesus told him to go into the upper room. He was a part of that group. So what we are reading, he is he's saying here, a witness. This guy, he was an eyewitness, and he lived through this. He is giving us the benefit of his life experiences to help us understand as to who we are and what we have in Jesus. Mm -hmm. His life experiences. Yeah. And I think so many times, because we cannot fully identify, sometimes we kind of miss it. Just like young folks, you know, when, uh, you know, I know when I was young, my mother was telling me things. I know you've talked about it. When your mother would kind of give you some things in life that would help you out because you felt this, or at least I know I felt because I could not identify with it. I felt as though, okay, that won't happen to me. And then later on, I should have listened. Mm -hmm. I, well, a lot of times you, you know, paid don't, attention. Don't, don't realize that it's going to mm -hmm. come your way. And, yes. And, and, you know, and when you're young, your knowledge is limited. Just, yeah. <laughs> so now, he is talking to us, the body of believers, based upon his life experiences. He says, and a, uh, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. He says here to the elders, or those who are in a position of leadership, those who serve as uh, servant leaders. He says here, feed the flock of God. If I'm not mistaken, Jesus told him, you, you know, if you love me, you know, feed, feed the sheep. Because he was commissioned. Uh, yes. Jesus gave him that commission to feed the flock. <laughs> feed the flock. And he's passing this thing on to feed the flock. Now, if you've ever been around any type of livestock, whether it be cows, goats, or whatever, and they look to that shepherd, they look to that leader to provide or to lead them to where they can have a healthy, nourishing meal, mm -hmm. where it is going to be beneficial, where it's going to be beneficial, where it's going to help them grow 
is going to help them produce others just like them. So when we think about church, when we think about pastors and bishops and those that are serving in offices who have the responsibility to feed the sheep, it is incumbent upon them that they must give the people the word of God so that they can be nourished, so that they can mature, so that they can, just like a natural sheep, reproduce. Mm -hmm. And what he's given them is spiritual food. Yes, it is. And it's up to the person who, you know, you to select what you're going to eat. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, 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 you know, what, what, what you're going to eat and you find. Sometimes people are drawn by crowds, you know, by the big mega uh, yeah. church or blah, blah, blah. And sometimes they're just drawn because a celebrity go there. Mm. I've heard that some people join a church because some football players go to a church. Yeah. And you're like, really? That's how you select that church? I went there to that church because they had a great children's ministry. They basically got my children out of my face. <laughs> they don't want to say that part. Yeah. I guess they had the children somewhere and they were playing games and stuff. That was good. But, so that was great. I just got a moment. <laughs> now, so tell, for the wrong reason. T tell them how it was with you when you were a child. You didn't go to no children's church. Did you? Oh, we didn't have children's ministry. Well, most old school people know that. You did yeah. that grow up. I, and I'm not, right against, there. I'm not against children's ministry. I mean, I get them to get That's this right. right. Let's, let's get yeah. that straight. But I'm just saying, we didn't have a growing up. I'm just, for, for a parent to allow a child to select their church is an error. I agree. Because if you're going to let them make an important selection, mm -hmm such as where they are going to be spiritually fed? I mean, I find that amazing. Uh, somebody said, well, I let my son pick pick the church. They really liked it. They they, they like the children ministry. Or they like this. I mean, could that not be a trick? <laughs> will, will they let them? <laughs> like, we they... give them candy. We'll give them ice cream because we already know what the child is going to do. They're going to go home and say, Mom, I like that church. Let's pick it. But no, you're supposed to be the spirit. You're responsible for the spiritual growth of your child. And there, you're supposed to be able to say, no, this right here is where you need to be to be get fed or whatever. As parents, uh -huh. we don't let our children pick their meal, what they want to eat, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just, you know, go to the grocery store because we know they'll go for the ice cream, they'll go for the candy, they'll go for the sweet stuff. We don't even let them pick their education. We, we put them in the school. We select that school and yes. go, you know, you're going to be here. That's right. Matter <laughs> of fact, own, uh -huh. we don't even let them pick out their own clothes. <laughs> Most so, of us don't un until they get yes, to so. a certain age. <laughs> but until they get to a certain age, only when it comes down to spiritual matters, matter do we begin to just be relaxed and let anything go. Trick. It's a trick. Trick of the enemy. But let's go. He says, "Feed the flock of God which is among you." He says, "Taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint or feeling forced to do it, but willingly." Folks, I'm telling you, we do this Bible study. We do Sunday morning worship, sir. Everything that we do, it is done willingly. It is that I want to do it. Just like we saw here with Paul when he, he wanted to go back to minister to the people so that they can grow and mature. He did not, amen, worry about uh, him being stoned again. He went back to the same place. Why? Because he was willing to do it. But he says, but willingly, not for filthy lucre or ill gain money, when money is your reasoning for doing it, mm -hmm. filthy lucre. He says, but of a ready mind. He says, neither as being lords over God's heritage. Pastors, even though you may have charge over the flock or the members of the church, that's still... Those are God's folks. Yes. Yeah, those are God's folks. Over God's heritage. That's right. That, those, <laughs> those are, those are, you are an under shepherd. That's what you are. That's what we are. Mm -hmm. We are under shepherds. We don't control anybody. Matter of fact, we have a hard time controlling our own children sometimes. <laughs> a challenge in that. But, you know, you don't control the people. But let's go on here. 
but being this is how you are being uh you know neither is being lords over god's heritage but this is what we are in samples or examples that's it mm -hmm. you know when i was studying reading this i i i thank god for my uh, military uh training that i received when i was in the army uh, serving because i learned what it means to lead by example I, what's that saying uh don't do as i do <laughs> what is, they got one out says, there for the yeah world. something like that yeah but the thing is don't don't um uh, don't do as i do do as i say or something yeah. like that <laughs> but a leader will do amen and then when he asks of others to do it is because either he has done it or she has done it and they are doing it so there's nothing uh you know that uh, uh, how should I say, above me or below me or beneath me that I won't do when it comes to gospel service or serving uh, the church. Remember before, these are early days of the ministry, when uh, we were at one place and we came in and the bathroom had overflowed <laughs> and it was on the floor and it was <clears throat> leaking out of the bathroom and coming on the floor, getting into the sanctuary and we all had on our clothes and everything. Mm -hmm. I just kind of rolled up my sleeves, even with my dress clothes on, mm -hmm. and I mopped it up. Mm -hmm. I cleaned it up and everything to be an example to the flock. Fourth verse, he says, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, he will appear. Ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. He says, likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves to the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. So this is a reciprocal type thing where I'm submitted, I'm subject, and I can, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not over uh, and all of this other stuff, but we submit one to another. He says, and be clothed with humility, to be humble. No one above anyone else. Yes, our offices are different. And yes, they're different protocols based upon those offering our offices that we serve in. But nevertheless, if you strip that away, we still appear, so to say. Mm -hmm. well, and, and, and Pastor, I don't know if you just kind of overread that. We said, likewise, the younger submit yourselves unto the elders. Mm -hmm. That he is informing uh, the younger ones to submit to the leadership of the elder. Yes. Do you think people have a hard time with that? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a, many, a lot of them do follow yeah. uh, that, but that that was the instruction right there. Yeah, that, that they, is the instruction. They're not on equal level because the elder has more experience. That's right, based <laughs> upon the, the offices and everything. Yeah. But, every, you know, even an elder, he has to show respect to that younger as well. Exactly. So I, I think that's what he's referring to in talking about being subject to one another. But let's go on it. Uh, he says, um, uh, what did I stop off it? For God resisteth the proud and giveth unmerited favor to the humble. He says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Mm -hmm. I think the challenge is recognizing, knowing when is due time? <laughs> yeah, because you, you know, uh, when you read uh, the stories of old, uh, uh, Sarah, she did it, you know, as far as getting Hagar. Uh, uh, even with uh, Rebecca, I think it was uh, Rachel. Rachel did it with Jacob mm -hmm. as far as giving her maid, and then Leah did it. But a lot of times we want to help God, bottom line. And so, and like you said, in due time, we tend to uh, feel like maybe God didn't hear us. Uh -huh. And so we try to help him out a little bit. Try to help know, him out. Help him out. Then we can make it a little messy. <laughs> so that tells us we don't need, God don't need our help. Yeah. But it, 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 it's just amazing. God allowed them to do it. Mm -hmm. Sarah was allowed. I mean, that happened. Abraham had Hagar. Yeah, it, they had an Ishmael. It, yeah, <laughs> we're trying to have one. Of it. But let's go on here. He said, he says, um, uh, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Seven first, casting all your care upon him, 
for he careth for you. I mean, listen to this. Jesus is, 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 is telling us here through the word that we can cast our care, concern upon him, for he careth for us. He says, eighth verse. Now, this is what I really like. It. This helps me here. He says, be sober. Don't, don't try it. Just be it. Mm -hmm. Do not allow anything to enter into your body that is going to cloud your judgment and your decision making to muddle it, to mar it, all of those things. He says, be sober. Then he also says, be on the watch, be vigilant, be vigilant. This, this is the reason why you need to be sober. And this is why you need to be vigilant because whose adversary? Your adversary, Your adversary the devil. Mm. The enemy would love to get you to the place where you are not sober. Mm -hmm. Make sure I said that right. Yeah, well, vigilant. yeah where you're not sober mm -hmm. and when you're not watching. Mm -hmm. That's when he can do his most damage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He says, because your adversary, the devil, he says, as a roaring lion, not a roaring lion, but as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, mm -hmm. consume, utterly destroy. You know what? It that scripture is just not a some type of wise tale or some type of statement there. This fable. is real fable. That's a good one. Yes. It, this is for real. We living this out constantly. We're living it out. You, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we live that out. And again, Peter is talking to the believers, trying to help them adjust their attitude for the times of persecution trials, tem uh, temptations, tribulations, and all of this. And, that. and he lets us know that we must be vigilant and that we must be sober because our adversary is on the constant prowl, prowl looking to see who can he devour, who can he ultimately de destroy. And he's going to de destroy the one who is uh, the sober, uh, the, the one who is not sober and the one who is not vigilant. vigilant. Who's not on top of the word, who uh, don't don't have a study life, mm -hmm. who is weak, who yes. have, who's bearing no fruit. And who wants to blame it on someone else while they are not where they should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A scapegoat. A trick of the enemy. Trick you, of the like enemy. the old old school used to, used to say all the time, that ain't nothing but the devil. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So ninth verse, going on with the ninth verse. He says, whom resist, how? He says, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. To the first, but the grace of, but the God of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory. How has he called us? He says, by Christ Jesus. After that, he have suffered, put up with some things, gone through some things. He says, suffered a while make you perfect or complete, Glory. establish you, establish, strengthen, and settle you. It is in the book of Psalm where it talks about weeping may endure for a night, Glory to God. but joy cometh in the morning. Yeah. Pointing to the fact that trouble does not last always. Hallelujah. Trials, persecution, Glory does not God. last always. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, it even just goes even further to let us know that if you are in a situation where you must surrender or give up your life for this gospel, this good news, it says to be with the Lord is even better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's even better. And you know what? That really is the point of like what I was talking about Sunday as far as the talents. Mm -hmm. And I've just been meditating on that. Is is God wanting us to l make His word be glorified in us? Yes. Give Him an opportunity to be able to, so He can get, the, so He can get the glory. Yes. Versus just caving in after we have suffered for a while. He said, "Yes." After we've suffered for a <laughs> while uh, and, and really went through, mm -hmm. we can give Him the glory. He's gonna come through. But can we allow God to get that, to have that, have that glory, Amen. that opportunity that to opportunity. shine? Yes, because he said what he's going to do. 
He says, make you perfect or complete you, whatever it is. He says, establish you or establish you, strengthen you. Mm -hmm. Some of us just want to be strengthened. Mm -hmm. And he said, he will do that. And then after all of this, settle you. Settle you. Glory to God. I got a testimony now. Meaning that it's done over with it's done. and I'm you in got, a comfortable yeah. place. You got the victory on that. <laughs> You know, and you were able to yes. give, get God the glory. Let yes. him let him have glory in your situation. Yes. Amen. Amen. 11 verse, it says, to him be glory. Yeah, just like what I just to said. Him to him be, be glory. glory. Yes. And dominion yeah. or in charge or he is the one that is running it. He says, forever yeah. and ever. Amen. Let's give God a chance. Amen. Give him a chance. And it's so easy to just, you know, the enemy makes it easy where we could just go to Google or we can go to go to the doctor or we can go here and there and we could just cave in. But why not give, give God, God a chance? A chance. Amen. Amen. Let's go on here. We, we want to finish up reading through here. My goodness, where did the time go? Uh, by Sylvanius, a faithful brother unto you, uh, as I suppose, I've written briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God wherein you stand. The church that is at Babylon, Elected together with you, salute you, and so doth Marcus, my son. Greet ye one another with a kiss of charity or love. Peace be with you all that are in Christ Jesus. Amen, or so be it. So we've completed the first uh, letter or the first epistle or the first book of Peter. Now we're positioning ourselves to go into Second Peter. But before we do that, I want to share something with you here. The message and purpose. Shortly before his death, Peter desired to build up the faith of those believers so that they could recognize who, excuse me, what was counterfeit by knowing what is true. He knew that if they increased in their understanding and application of scripture, they would grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ. Believers have a new nature from God, but it needs to be fed and nurtured. The new nature needs to be fed and nurtured as they participate with Christ in their growth in grace. Before concluding, Peter warns the believers under, excuse me, his charge against the influence of false teachers infiltrating the churches, denying the scriptures and the Lord in an attempt to destroy the faith. Peter urges believers to hold tightly to their faith, to continue growing in grace, to keep alert for false teaching, to know the word, that's what we do, so that folks will know the word and to be ready and watching for Christ's return when they will receive their kingdom reward. Patiently or patient waiting for Christ is not wasted faith. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. I like that last part. Yes. It's not wa wasted faith. Patient fame. waiting for Christ is not wasted faith. Glory to God. It ain't wasted. Yes, yes. All right, let's go on here, jumping into 2 Peter. It's a Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the right standing of God and our Savior, Christ Jesus Christ. He says, grace and peace be multiplied. Grace and peace be multiplied where? Unto you. How is it done? Mm. Through the knowledge of God. Mm. Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord. This is why we push reading, studying the word, studying the word, studying the word, benefiting from those who have studied and written books and done research and, and, and have written books to help you better understand that will, you know, that making books and things that are available for you to dig in as you go through this, because you are going after the knowledge of God. And as you get that knowledge, he says, unmerited favor mm -hmm. and peace is going to be multiplied, not added, mm -hmm. multiplied, meaning that multiplication is a faster way of growing than addition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it is. is. Multiplication through is the, it, through that knowledge. It is only through the knowledge, mm -hmm. the knowledge that the grace and the peace that you may desire to have is only going to come through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let me say something. You know, yeah. with um, 
that grace and peace. God is the person we're having to have peace with. Mm -hmm. Learning of his righteousness, we had to be put back in that standing in righteousness, put back in right standing, because you said right standing, put in righteousness. Uh -huh. And this is a big deal for us to learn uh, and get an understanding now of the King, of of the Lord Jesus Christ and what they've done. Oh. We now have access to this. Yes. We through got our access. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's right. We have access now to be able to learn of him so things may be multiplied, might be, so things can be added to us. Yes. But this is very powerful. Yes, it is. It is. But let's go on. According as his divine, not just natural, but he says divine, power from God. He says power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. I, I just want to just think about that. All things that pertain to life mm, and to godly life here, right? Life here. <laughs> That's what he said. Life here. That's the point I wanted to make mm -hmm. life right here. Terra firma earth. Mm -hmm. It's, it's all been made given unto us and, and godliness and those spiritual things. It's all been given and made available. How is it done? Right. Through the knowledge. Glory to God. Through, that knowledge through, through the, under, through the through, word of God, through, right? through the knowledge of him. The more we know about him. Remember, I've always talked about this. Jesus talked about, learn of me. <laughs> learn of me. I mean, you think about it. We, we've been in darkness. We're having to, we're having to learn of, about the king. We're yes. having to learn about our God. Not only the king and the kingdom and how it all works. And how it works. Good Lord of mercy. Yeah, sometimes you just want to hurt yourself, you know, just like slap yourself. Be like, where I've been? <laughs> I, you know, the younger you are, that you can get it. The oh, better. my God, your life can be so powerful. Let's junk up here. Uh, yes, let's junk. But let's go on. He says, through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. He says, whereby, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. You will not know of the great, exceeding, uh, the great, exceeding great and precious promises without studying and gaining the knowledge. Mm -hmm. You will not. One of the worst things that you can do is to quote a promise or something that you think belongs to you because you heard somebody else say it. Yeah. If you are not convinced, the enemy, if you don't know this yourself, the enemy of our faith will punk you every time. Mm -hmm. And you have to work at learning what the promises are. That's that's like a lawyer. They go to school. They have to study have the to different study. laws and different things. We have to learn, study, apply. Yes. So that they can stand before the judge and defend and talk about because they've studied, they've done their work. Mm -hmm. But let's go. He says here, uh, whereby are given unto exceeding great and precious promises and by these that you might be the uh, partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. This world has corruption in it. And people go after that corruption through lust, mm -hmm. thinking they're going after something because the enemy paints a picture for them. Mm -hmm. Case in point, you, you want to indulge in this drugs. Look how they enjoy. Look, you know, they're seeing things. They're, you know, they're, 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 their problems are no longer a part of them. That's mm -hmm. all a part of facade. And it is through those lusts that they will amen, begin to get into it. They have an insatiable desire, a hunger. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes corruption and it corrupts. All right, let's go on. Fifth verse, he says, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. We're, we're, we're running close on time. I want to read this, but next week, I'm going to go back and go over this with clarity because I want to ensure that you're grasping this. He says, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. All right. He says, and to knowledge temperance 
and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. Why all of these things being added? He said, for if these things be in you and abound or grow to the point that you're able to share them out, let's go, he said, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful oh in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So all of these things you're putting together, you're putting together as you're learning, you're adding virtue, you're adding temperance, you're adding, you're adding all of these things that are going to help you grow and mature in your knowledge. And he says, when you have all of this here, he says, that make you, you shall neither be barren or unfruitful. Mm -hmm. And you know, barren means not producing anything. <laughs> you will produce. <laughs> yes. And the fruit that you produce will be the ones that are greatly needed by folks. Mm -hmm. That's that's what he wants to do. He wants to produce needed fruit through you, but he has to work through someone. And this is what happens when the believer goes back to pursuing the knowledge of God, the knowledge of who Jesus is, what he has done, what he's made available pursuing the knowledge of these these exceeding precious promises by delving into it, finding out all that he has made available. All right, I, I'm almost uh, through for this evening. He says here, uh, in ninth verse, he says, but he that lacketh these things, this is who you are, blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. And you're talking about a believer right there then, huh? <laughs> that was or once was. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, we're going to go ahead and just hold it right here and we're going to pick it up on next week. We're going to pick it up here on uh, Second Peter, first chapter. And I'll go back over this, but the, starting at the 10th verse. I'd like to thank you all for joining us here for our Bible study. We do this on a weekly basis every Wednesday, 7.30 to 8.30, only one hour. We'd like to thank everyone who participates and views and is, is a part of this thing uh, that we are doing here. Just want to uh, let you know that we have our uh, Sunday morning worship service here again on Facebook Live at 11 a.m. every Sunday morning. You are welcome to join us. We are welcome to share out our Facebook link to let people know about us and to so that they can join in, in the worship service and they can hear the word of God. Again, we just bless God for all that he has done and all that he is yet doing in our lives. Yes, ma'am. Yes, and I'm asking all the women that got that email about the district, um, if you're going to give me um, the $20 to go to the district, please hit uh, Missionary Talisha up and send it to her. I need to turn those funds in um, by, I think Friday was the deadline. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, then. So we thank God for you, and we just want to be able to support other works that are going on. We're part of a, an organization, and the women are doing their work, and we just want to support them. So with that said, we bless God for you. Again, come on back to view us uh, and, and fellowship with us at the appropriate time. We give God the glory, and God bless you until our next broadcast.